replica on your left, retail on your right, you can see that there is a difference in box sizes. Let's zoom out just a little bit. These are both the same size, 10 and a half. On my monitor, this is looking blue. This is not a blue box. It is purple in real life. I think on this camera, I can see that it's purple. On that camera, I can see that it's purple. It's probably just my monitor, but that is a good clue. Also, they are different shades of purple. So that is also a good clue as well. If your swoosh is sinking on a larger size, you should be asking questions. Okay, so here are the box labels. The retail box label is eight and a half centimeters by four centimeters to the perforation. It's 9.4 centimeters all the way to the end is the, the suggested retail. This fake is 10 centimeters by 4.2, so that is just a wrong size completely. And the Nike SB branding on this particular replica looks like that grinning meme. The style code is correct. Now here are the interiors. I'm sure that you can tell what I can tell here. The interior on a retail is just nude on the inside and brown, it is not white. Also, there is a code on the inside of retail and there is no code on the inside of this particular replica. All right, replica on your left, retail on your right. Here's the profile. Now my first impression was the smell. The smell on this particular replica it's pretty neutral. The smell on retail, though, mmm, it is heaven. It is that heavenly perfume smell that I guess they put in there to cover up the glue smell. I don't know. I don't care. It smells so good. That should be an excellent legit checking indicator. Not all retails have that smell. This particular retail does. So if you have one that's new that doesn't, it's a good clue. All right, let's talk about the outsole. On a Nike SB post, I believe, 2011, uh, they started using this Phylon plate here in the middle. This is a separate piece, so if I was to remove this whole outsole, there would be a hole here. Now, this particular replica actually does have a real Phylon. Now, the way you can tell is if you press down on the edges, it can separate from the rubber outsole. Now on a cheaper replica, this would all just be rubber and this would be painted white. So that is a very good clue. But the branding on here looks so different that it is a very easy tell. You can see the branding on the retail is obviously retail branding. This branding on the replica, everything just looks thin and weird and wonky and off. All right, let's talk about the medial side here. I'm going to bring your attention to the black swooshes. Now, since I'm using so much diffuse light in here, it's gonna to be tough to get to reflect light. Let me see here. Let me see if I can do it like this. That's not really working either. Anyway, here in real life, the retail reflects more light than this particular replica does. The replica looks a little flatter, more diffused. The retail is not glossy by any means, but it's just a different finish. And then you can really take a look at that stitching here on the midsole. The retail stitching, the threads are flat and this replica has a shiny finish. So that's a good tell as well. Forgot to talk about the heel. Let's go to the heel. Kind of tough to see black on black, but we're gonna get through it. The replica looks cleaner than the retail. There is no nub here like there is here. The branding is centered on the replica and it is not on the retail. This is typical of Dunk QC of old. Overall, I think they've gotten better, but don't expect a retail to have all of these great QC qualities, because this is something generally to be expected of a dunk, typically made in Vietnam. There's just a lower standard of QC coming out of those particular factories, and this was made in Vietnam. Now let's talk about the lateral side. This is something I just noticed now, and I'm gonna start paying attention to in the future. I want you to take a look. Here is the retail. I want you to take a look at the inside of these holes that they cut out for the laces. Now if you look very closely, you can see that it's red and then there's black and then there's white. That is because you have this piece of red composite leather covering this 
black piece of composite leather. So that means that this black piece is going all the way under here and then covering this white piece, which means the white piece is going all the way out. Okay, so there's three pieces of composite leather layering over each other. When you cut that hole, you can see all three. On this particular replica, all I see is red and white, which tells me that this piece of composite leather did not come out all the way here. Okay, so that could be an excellent legit checking indicator. Let's talk about the RAN and the VAMP. The RAN and the VAMP. Shout out to Roseanville. They have inspired my analysis so much that I believe that they have improved the quality of my videos and I really appreciate that. So definitely give them a watch. The polyurethane coat on these shoes is different and you can really see it on the VAMP there. And it's a slightly different pattern on that RAN. So I'm speaking about both the white and the red. You can feel it too. The retail does feel softer. And what I've learned from that channel is that that means, that probably means that the polyurethane coat is smaller and maybe the actual leather here is thicker. Whereas this particular replica just feels like a typical uh, dunk release, which is just thick polyurethane. All right, let's talk about the tongues here. Now, this is a typical flaw of a lot of replica dunks in that I think either they don't sew the tongue the same way as retails or they just overstuff them. But as you can see, the top of the tongue is facing the wearer and the top of the, the tongue tag here is just nice and flat and you can see that branding when you're just looking directly at the shoe. Like I'm looking directly at the shoe right now and I only see up to here. Uh, this part here is facing the other way. So I believe that that's a good tell. Obviously the colors on these tongue tags are different and you can really see that it is just overstuffed on this replica tongue versus this retail tongue. Then if we want to talk about the printing on the back there, it is just night and day. So lots of differences there. Now as far as extra laces go on this particular replica, I received a pair of white dunk laces with a red line on the bag and they were not packed like typical dunk laces are packed. On this particular retail, I actually did not receive a bag. I got these in the secondary market. There was no bag and it was white dunk laces. So let me know in the comments if you have a DS with the lace bag not detached, um, if it's just a white dunk lace bag and if the lace bag has a red line or not let us know in the comments below all right here are the insoles replica on your left retail on your right now this particular replica insole is thinner this way and it is also thinner this way so it's a smaller insole oh that's cute Rel. that's very cute i made it myself yeah it looks Just good right now. it looks good I like it. Can I make another one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this is obviously a cheaper insole because the foam plate here is just, there's no difference between the material here and the material here other than the color. Whereas on a real one, it's it seems almost like a memory foam material. And then the Zoom Air unit is very very firm on the retail and it is squishy on this replica i'm not even sure i mean there's some air in there there's some pressure in there but eh. on this particular replica it looks like a terry cloth top with the branding on the heel uh, but that is not what retails are like uh, retails are cotton but they're not as shiny and terry clothy as as that uh, replica is then here are the footbeds Let's zoom in there a little bit. So we do have nylon strobles. We do have uh, one visible guide hole, but there is much more white stitching on this retail than there is on this replica. Show me your TTs. 
white foot gang, you can go true to size. Everyone else, you could definitely go true to size. The toe box is very roomy here. You know, I kind of was a hater on any Chicago colorway that wasn't a Jordan 1 high. I just was a purist like that. But it's been a few years now these have been out and they're growing on me enough so that I would rock them and I wouldn't hate on it. So I think it's pretty cool. Uh, obviously I'm in the super minority on that, but um, I just thought I'd share that with you. Anyway, that of course is up to you. All right, let's go ahead and do us a UV check. We'll do the retail first as a control. Little bit of glue uh, right above the cup outsole there. Oh, lots of glue here on the uh, Phylon plate. Just just covered in glue on the edges there. That's about it. And then we'll do this replica here. Okay, we got guidelines. We got guidelines underneath the swoosh, right on the edges of the quarter panel. Oh, this is another interesting thing. The Phylon actually lights up on this particular replica and it does not on the retail. Plenty of guidelines to be seen all throughout. So those are all good tells. Nike SB Dunklo Pro, Chicago.